Coast Radio, hashtag TO Radio, hashtag TO Media, hashtag Too Many Hashtags, get hashtag now. And we're back with Jay Ship. Hold on, let me adjust this because it's a little low. Anyways, people, um, y'all already know what's going on, man. Y'all already know what it is. Y'all know the vibes. And here today, we're not doing music. We're not no doing music. actors. We're not doing actresses. We're not doing athletes. We've known everybody for a minute. But we're on um, business. And y'all know how I feel about business, especially black business, black entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And especially when it comes to knowing how to run a business. When I mean that, knowing all the aspects. We're talking about marketing. We're talking about promotions. We're talking about quality. And this lady right here needs no introduction. If you have Twitter, <laughs> you already know who I'm talking to right now, especially because oh y'all see the title. Miss Ty Bowen, how's it going? Hi. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm Everything's doing, great. I'm good, man. I'm blessed and I'm highly, highly favored. Highly favored. Yes. Amen. There we go. I, I do have it. to say this one thing real quick. You made it real tough for boys, for dudes in college at one point when you got married. Girls were like, oh my gosh, like, this is what Stop. I want. I'm, 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 I'm walking around here like, God dang it. Just, just got to step my shit up. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's so crazy. Somebody told me that before. Like, they like DM'd me and was like, you know, like, well, they weren't talking directly to me. They were like, but your husband, like, how am I supposed to keep up with that? I'm like, I don't know. Right. And I don't know. Hey, first of all, it's not supposed to be a comparison, you know, at the mm -hmm. same time. I think that's what a lot of people understand. That's your happiness. That's your situation. Right. That's your blessing. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but when it hit my desk, people, like, start sending me stuff. Like, hey, look, hold on. Ah. <laughs> but, not on a joking level, though, we go glad you here today. And we're here Thank to talk you. about your business. We're here to about, talk about clothing. Yes. White flag clothing. Yes, white flag clothing. All right. Let's, mm -hmm. let's jump into it. What made you get into fashion? Um, okay, so when I was, like, younger, I have an auntie, my dad's sister. Um, she loves, loves, loves fashion, so I will go here to Houston every summer and just be with her. And so she's, like, a personal shopper, personal stylist, so I would, you know, be able to go with her to Saks and just be behind the scenes, like, their back rooms while she pulls different clothing for different, you know, clients and stuff. Right, so right. she truly, like, introduced me to the world. And when I was young, she used to come to New Orleans and bring me to Essence Festival. And my mom used to be so mad because she's like, Essence Festival is for grown-ups. Like, you're not a grown-up. But my aunt would be like, please let her come. She'll make me clothes out of jeans. Like, it was crazy. So ever since just being little, watching her, being with her, it just naturally was like, okay, I want to do fashion. So high school, I honestly really didn't have an interest that much. I wanted to be like a pharmacist when I got into um, high school, which is so opposite. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I loved, you know, dressing up my uniform. Right. Um, I was never the one with just basic. Like, I had to add, like, a bow, accessory, something right. you know, to like make me different. My future said dress it up and make it real. Make it real for me, definitely, and that was me all day. Everybody knew that. Mm -hmm. So, it still was there. I just feel like it's kind of, like, genetically inside me, but it was just never, like, really an entrance until I got to college. So, I tried a little pharmacy thing out, and I was like, Oh my God, I hate this. Like, I, I'm not doing this. I know this is wrong. So I met this young girl and she was in the fashion program at LSU. And I'm like, I didn't even know LSU had a fashion program. So I was like, okay, well, who do I talk to? Because I need to switch my major like now. Mm -hmm. And so I was like maybe a year and a half in college. So like, I was so worried my credits wouldn't like trans what is it, Tran transfer? Trans Trans over or something. Yeah, <laughs> and so I was like, damn, I'm not going to be able to graduate on time, so we shall see. But when I talked to the woman, the advisor, my credits, I think I just did, like, prereqs or something, so they really didn't even matter, honestly. So um, when she told me that, I just instantly changed my major to fashion. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, let's rekindle this fire. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what I really want to do. Because, you know, when you're in college, you always think about what can bring me money. And that's it. That's just your thing. Like, what can bring me money? You know? So, and you're not really thinking fashion because if I wanted to do fashion, I would have went to a fashion school. So, that did come across my mind before I applied to college. So, I applied to um, a college called SCAD, and it's just for, like, design. But I didn't go to SCAD because I got a free um, free ride to LSU. So, I kind of just... Going where the money resides. Where the money resides. My mom, she big on that kind of stuff. Like, she's mm. very successful. So, she puts pressure on me. I ain't gonna lie. Like... She pressured me because I'm like, oh, my God, like, I have to be something to, like, amount to what you're doing. Like, mm -hmm. and she's not into um, fashion or anything, but she's in psychology and she does really well. So I'm like, right. okay, I can't let her down. I don't know how she's going to feel if I'm, like, 
mom's passion, but my mom is so amazing. She's like, if that's your passion, girl, do it. And if God presented an opportunity for you, go for it. Like, who says you can? Like, you can do whatever you want and make it whatever you want. That's you. Right. So when I, um, you know, changed all of my stuff over to be in fashion, like, it was so easy. Like, I was like, wait, this is college. Like, this is, like, me doing stuff in my sleep. But it just taught me, like, so much other stuff with fabrics and, like, um, I'm not a designer, honestly. I do not design stuff. But I was so interested in just learning, like, everything. So I think it's more so, like, me getting in my element and making me feel like, okay. You you kind of tapped into something that you knew already was there, but it's mm -hmm. finally got presented to you. Like, you kind of, like, brought that out of you. Right. That's, that's, a, that's a big thing. I feel like a lot of people don't do that with their dreams. You no, know? like, it's you like, mask them and you try to do what you think that's going to, like, provide for you and your future family or provide you the type of lifestyle you want. So sometimes, like, creatives don't think that that dream of theirs can do the job, you know, because right. it's, so, it's so hard, like, honestly, to succeed in... Fashion, acting, like, it's, a, it's not a struggle. I'm not going to say that. It's a challenge. And not everybody likes challenges. They want to, like, go to school, pay, pay all this money to go to school, and they want to make sure, like, they have a degree that's going to make them some cash. So. Yeah. But I always say, like, when you chase your dreams, you know. You, you got to do it. No matter what, you know, if you're struggling, you're not struggling. But once you figure, like, get over that little hump, mm -hmm. when you make it, you're straight. You're you know? straight. And, it, and then you get so much satisfaction. And it, you know, fulfills you because you're like, damn, like, I'm doing what I love. It's my passion. And I still can provide for myself. So that's why I always, like, tell people, like, I don't care if, like, my mom is a living testament. Like, shout she out knew, moms. shout out to moms. She knew, like, she wanted to help people, but she was just, like, in the wrong path like she was actually a nursing student mm -hmm. and um i i don't know what's the last phase like residency or whatever you it's like whatever the last phase is before you you know it's like every the complete thing and so she like was on her way to school and we used to drive with her all the way to mississippi so i watched my mom be like a hustler like and that was her thing like i got two children i have to do something that's gonna provide for them and she was totally like ignoring oops, ignore like her passion mm -hmm. so she was on her way this uh particular day to school and she started crying and she's like you know i know i'm unhappy but i i don't i can't let my mom down and like all this stuff and she went and checked in her patient and her patient was like you know baby why are you here my mom was like excuse me like you know i'm here to take your vitals like no like why no are you she here? told me she asked my mom like no you know what i mean why are you here my mom was like she just instantly started crying and she was just like I quit. She was like, I have to do like my passion. And she was so far like into her almost getting her degree that when she applied to UNO, because she was like William Carey, mm -hmm. when she applied to UNO, they created a class for her just so her credits can transfer into like psychology. So when I like tell my mom's story, it's just so motivating because it's like, that's why she don't take no shit. She's like, you don't, I don't care what you're doing. You could do it. Like, None of that, all of that, because right. look what happened with me and God provided a way. So that's why I stood strong and I'm like, okay. And look, this mm -hmm. it worked out because we're here right now. <laughs> yes. Amazing testimony and amazing story for sure. For Thank sure. you. Like I, said, like I said before, shout out to mom. Shout out to mom. She put you on the right path for sure. Like just motivation, motivating mm -hmm. you. And let's, let's get into like the actual brand. Like why why the name White Flag Clothing? Like, Oh, I love telling this story. <laughs> I'm like, I love telling this story. Okay, basically... Um, long story short, I, at LSU, um, how did it, basically, I was at LSU going to get lunch, and, um, there's, like, people who want to pray for you every day, they come up to you on campus, and they want to pray, and so, I literally avoid them, because I'm, like, you know, my spirit of discernment is very strong. And no, not being funny, but like, come no, on. I get you. We have to you know like, what I mean? We have them at Sam Houston. We have, it, oh, really? It, yeah, we, yeah, we have those at Sam Houston. I ain't trying to cut you off. No, you're good. That's why I, I kind of laughed. <laughs> I was like, oh, I know what you're talking about. You're not really yes. trying to be rude, but like, yo, I'm trying to you're get like, my I'm food. You're like, I'm trying to get my lunch to make and my lunch time. And people want to tell you, like, they testimony. Like, I used to be in the roller skating rings, clubs all the time. Yes. Like, That's cool, but like, I just want this. To be so you feel what I'm saying? Like, they you. were so like, oh my God. And then they'll have the extremists. They're like telling you. What you're doing wrong and like all this stuff so i just try to avoid them at all costs because you never know who you're gonna get but right. this particular time um this girl came up to me like literally stopped me i couldn't even get out my door and i was like what like what's wrong and she's like can i pray for you so i was like okay but i couldn't even say no because she was literally in my face so i was like right. yes sure um you know 
pray for me, everything. So at this point, my spirit of discernment didn't, I didn't feel like she was, you know, coming any any ill form so i was like okay let's pray right. so one eye open i'm watching her pray for me so like as she's praying for me she's telling me you know i see you holding a white flag so at this time like i didn't translate it into my clothing brand i thought she meant like because i was getting a lot of followers and stuff from social media at that time because mm -hmm. i just got engaged so i thought she was saying like those girls like because they see you holding a white flag and you surrender your life to Christ, these girls are going to surrender their life to Christ. So I was like, ooh, like that's deep. You know, that's something deep to say. So I was just like, okay, well, and I, anything I do, I always feel like, you know, I try to think to myself, how does God get the glory in whatever I do? Well. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, how is he using me as a vessel? You know, so I, my clothing stuff was not even on my mind. So that mm -hmm. was that. Like two years later, I was graduating and my mom was like, okay, so what's your plan? Once you get out, what you gonna do? So I'm like, you know what? I do wanna own a clothing store eventually, not now, but eventually. So she was like, well, what's the name? And I was like, instantly white flag just came. And she knows the story, so she starts crying. My mom's a crybaby. So she's like, starts crying. And I was like, crying? Cause I'm like, mom, this is so like amazing. Like God just confirmed everything in the spirit. Like white flag so that's how i got white flag and i wrote it in my notes on i know everybody got like notes in their iphones you do <laughs> so all yes, my ma important stuff i just write it in my notepad and so white flag he is here now and i know it's from the lord god because literally like i couldn't name my brand anything i actually had a fashion brand before white flag that little people know about it was called santa blanca didn't have any meaning. I just did something just to see, to get my feet wet in the business, mm -hmm. see how it's gonna go. And obviously, Santa Blanca was not nearly as successful as White Flag. White Flag, yeah, White Flag knows enough. Like, yeah. I, I, saw, <laughs> I saw White Flag, you know, it's crazy. We actually had a guest in here, um, Juba. Ah, I love Juba! Juba was That's in like here. a brother. Bro, he was in here not too long ago. He literally had a White Flag jumpsuit on. What? Like low key on some small world stuff. So Whoa, Juba's like my brother. Shout out to Juba. Yeah, Listen Juba to his cool. music, stream his albums. Yes. Oh, nah, for sure. Juba cool, man. T all along, you know. So shout Yes, out to him. I love Juba. Nah, cool. Sorry. That is and he you know what I love about Juba also? He always represents the brand. And it's like what else can you ask for? Somebody to represent your brand wherever they go. So that's mm -hmm. awesome. No, nah, for sure, for sure. And he repped it. Mm -hmm. And I ain't gonna lie to you. And so I was like, oh bro, I said, where you get that jumpsuit? That's all I know. <laughs> So my girl, uh, Ty, she real cool, da 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 You should have her on the show one day. Small world stuff. Crazy. I was just like, oh, okay. And you know how you hear something like, oh, I'll put it out. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I guess, you know, ironically enough, with him in line, we, we're here. You know, yes. We're interviewed. Perfect world scenario, small crazy. world scenario. That is crazy. Yeah, hey, it always works like it that. It does. Wow. See what I'm saying? Like, every time, anything with White Flag has been truly, like, so smooth. Mm -hmm. Um. Even with that, like naming it white flag, like when I get my inspiration, like I would be so specific. Like I would be walking to my dorm and he'll say something crazy like, don't take the stairs today, take the elevator. And I'm like, why in the basement? What do you mean? But I listen, you know, to the Holy Spirit. I'm like, okay, I'm thinking, cause maybe something going on in the staircase and he don't want me going over there. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds bizarre, but everything with God is bizarre. That's why I have all my packaging literally says like, allow God to lead the way. Cause I just let him lead me with this whole thing. And um, so that little story, I went to the, to the elevator, like he asked me and I saw like this flame, like it says, in case of an emergency, take the stairs with the flame, like if it's caught on fire. But the way the flame was like, I guess, I don't know. It was just so crazy. It wasn't a normal flame. It was different. Mm -hmm. So I took a picture and I like came up with a whole idea, like an outfit. And I'm like, oh, I'm putting this in my notes. I haven't released it yet because I'm trying to make it perfect. Exclusive, but exclusive. Yes. It's like, it's so specific with everything I do. It's not just, oh, I think it's cute. Let me put it out. I'm like, no. Nah, for sure, for sure, for sure on there. And you know what's crazy, though? I do ask, like, this question to everybody that comes on T.O. And it's kind of funny because we actually, like, went through a whole bunch. We went through the mama journey. We went mm -hmm. through how White Flag got here already. And we, and we just kind of, like, getting started wrecked up. Cooking yeah. <laughs> but I do ask this question with everybody that comes on T.O. about their journey and their destination. That's our thing over here. We want to know which one do you prefer. Has it been, like, your journey to get to where you're going? Or do you have a certain destination that... That's like, yo, I feel like I'm going to be, when I get here, that's it. Which oh, one? good question. Um, No, I won't even, I used to feel like it was about destination. Like, what's your end goal? Like, okay. Mm -hmm. But now I'm not because um, 
I feel like when you love something and it's like your business and it's like your baby, like you're gonna nurture it and feed it until whenever you need to stop. Like I don't, I don't really have a destination. I do know like what I want to accomplish. You know how everybody has a short term goal, long term goal. Yeah. I do have those, but it's not so like okay after white flag hits like millions of dollars, I'm done. Or if I get this pregnancy, I'm done. No, it's just more so like. I don't know, like allowing God to lead me, basically, and whenever. So, fi and to be honest, I don't even want it to end. I want it to be like a Louis Vuitton or a Gucci or whoever, like you know. No, and I feel like that's a big goal, especially because I was talking to some people like the other day, ironically enough, and we were talking about black like luxury uh, mm -hmm. brands, and I'm like, I feel like people don't really need to start investing back to in investing in black luxury brand brands or try to get brands that are like on the cusp. Like they could be luxury brands. Like get them up there because I'm like you spend on the bread with Gucci, yes. Fendi, Prada, and all that. And I'm not saying mm -hmm. they those pieces aren't nice to have. They are, but I know artists that are literally 